and welcome everyone to our session today on 20 free resources for teaching child development topics online. Now, if you're looking for new resources for teaching topics like reproduction and pregnancy, fetal development, infant and toddler development, and things like that, then this session hopefully is for you. Today, we're going to share some free resources you can implement into your own courses on child development. We'll be sharing resources such as videos that can be used for remote learning. We'll give you some classroom activities that can relate uh, that do relate to a variety of content areas surrounding child development that you could use for remote teaching and also learn how to adapt lessons from our real care curricula for online learning. But even though the topic focuses for online learning, um, most if not all of the resources and ideas will be shared today um, could also be used for in-person learning as well as hybrid environments. We know we find ourselves in many different learning environments these days. So with that in mind, we try to make things very adaptable and flexible for any type of learning environment. So here's a quick look at what we're gonna to discuss today. We'll be sharing some ideas and resources for each of the topic areas that you see listed here. We're also going to announce at the end a brand new resource that we have for teaching child development online. And then at the end, of course, we will have time for Q&A. So let's take a look and begin with some resources for teaching reproduction and pregnancy content online. Now there are many videos of varying links that can help teach reproductive, the reproductive process. And I'm just gonna highlight a few here. Videos are great because you can share the links with your students easily in an LMS system. And this is something that they can do remotely. Now, the first one I'm sharing here is a 45 minute video that includes male and female systems as well as fertilization. And it also goes into some genetics. Now this would be suitable for upper high school students. The second one on the list here, um, the anatomy of female productive, uh, reproductive system, um, was chosen because it shows how you can use an anatomical model to teach about reproduction. And if you have a model like that, you could certainly create your own short walkthrough recording and then share it with your students. Or if you don't wish to do that, here's one that's already done for you. Now, the third one here um, is an example of a very short targeted video using 3D animation to show the male reproductive system. So there's all sorts of different ways that you can use video assets that are free to teach this content remotely. Now, one online activity that could be used to help teach reproductive anatomy is to find an interactive anatomy website. Now this example here, and you can see the link there, is just one that I found. And you can click on various areas on that website and then more information is revealed. And it's just full of details. And this is just one site that I found. Um, there, are, there are more out there, I'm sure, but this one I thought was, was a really good one. Now in um, the Reality Works Healthy Choices curricula that you have available to you at the link on the screen, um, and this curriculum usually comes with our Real Care Baby. There is a lesson and it's in unit two, lesson one called Reproductive Systems, Fertilization and Conception. Now you do have uh, access to the, the entire lesson, the entire curricula for free at the link, but one of those activities is a two page handout on the reproductive system. So one thing you could do is you could access the lesson at the link above, and then the handout um, is also available in a Google Doc form at the link as well for ease of use. So this could easily be posted for students to complete um, via an LMS system or emailing or however you, you uh, connect with your students. But in the lesson, there are extensive lecture notes and also a PowerPoint. So you could simply record a lecture using the notes and the PowerPoint um, and make that recording available to your students also. So there's a lot of different, different ways you could adapt that type of thing for online learning, or if you're fortunate enough to be in an in-person format, you could do that lecture in PowerPoint in person, and then the, send the students home if you're in a hybrid model to do some of the activities that are found in that lesson as well. Now, there are many pregnancy videos to choose from as well as reproductive ones. Um, these focus on physical changes of the mother. Now, the first one here that I've chosen is a very short 3D animation of high quality. And it's very easy to see the visual changes um, during, during this video. The second one that I found uh, is called The Surprising Effects of Pregnancy is a slightly longer one, but it's very easy to understand um, the content of the video. It uses animation to show those physical changes. 
And then the third one here with the title changes in a woman's body during pregnancy was chosen because it goes through all of those physical changes month to month and also by trimester. So I thought these three would be uh, great to uh, use for a pregnancy lesson um, remotely if you were in that learning environment. Now at the website above is a lesson plan regarding pregnancy. And that lesson plan is 20 pages long. But one of the activities in it that could be used online is one called Two Truths and a Lie. So each question gives several answers and students are supposed to identify which one is the lie. Prior to launching an activity like this, it would be really helpful to discuss how students can tell which sources are trustworthy when reading information online. One free tool you could use to create online quizzes is SurveyMonkey or you could simply share this with students and have them complete it. Or in SurveyMonkey, you could turn it into an auto grading quiz to share as well. So this activity I think is quite flexible and, and you could use it in several different ways for remote learning. So here's a blog at the link that we've provided here that we wrote on how to teach a remote lesson on pregnancy and reproduction. So if you're in a remote learning environment, um, here is an easy do-it-yourself pregnancy simulation experience students could do at home to understand what it's like to be pregnant. And it, it's a good way to adapt the lesson that we have included with our pregnancy profile simulator, if you have that. You also have access to that curriculum for free as well at that link. So for the DIY, you take a backpack and you fill it with about 25 to 30 pounds of, of things. Um, and the goal is to fill up the space in that backpack, representing the average weight gain by that third trimester. Then you'd have your student wear it backwards so they can feel the difference in their center of gravity. And you can see a picture of that on the, on the screen in front of you. Another way you could do a DIY is take something that you could fill with warm water, like a hot water bottle, or maybe even a beach ball, and you could wrap it in a baby sling and wear it low on the abdomen. Another thing you could potentially use might be an exercise ball, medicine ball um, that has some weight to it also and wear it in a sling or wrap it in a scarf and wear it low on your abdomen in front of you. Um, in our pregnancy profile curriculum, uh, there is a lesson, lesson three is all about the pregnancy simulation. So if you did this DIY with your students at home, then you could have them do some of the tasks found in lesson three from, from that lesson in the pregnancy profile curriculum. Now, this is a video that actually shows you how to create a DIY empathy bump. Some of the ones I was describing to you um, in, the, in the previous slide, but this is actually video where a very short video, but it could be very helpful uh, if your students or you are interested in doing that kind of at-home simulation experience. I referred to the um, lesson three of the pregnancy profile curriculum before, and this is where your students would go through the simulation experience, and then you would have them do this list of tasks or similar tasks while they have their uh, pregnancy profile on in class, or if you're at home and you do the DIY thing with the backpack or a sling, have them do these types of tasks and then reflect on what it felt like when they had to do them because it will change your center of gravity. There's all sorts of aha moments that your students can, can uh, get a, a, a at-home simulation experience where they do simple things like going up and down the stairs, sitting and standing up, trying to lie down, even um, bending over to tie their shoes. It all gives them, gives them a chance to walk in the shoes of what it's like to be in that third trimester. Now at the link provided, um, here is a one hour lesson on childbirth related to career exploration that would fit perfectly into a unit on reproduction or pregnancy. And this lesson begins with a brainstorming of all the related careers you can think of relating to reproduction and pregnancy. Then students choose one to research and they prepare a five minute presentation. And then it would end with a panel discussion with several local childbirth related career personnel on a panel. So if you were doing something like this remote, they could certainly do, um, do the research project and things like that remote. Uh, you might even be able to have a, a panel discussion in Zoom inviting a local uh, childbirth related uh, personnel from maybe medical clinic, uh, perhaps even um, uh, social worker and, and other uh, even uh, nurses, uh, pediatricians, et cetera. And then 
you can see how all the activities so it could definitely be adapted to an online environment or used in person as well. Next up, we're going to get into some resources and some activities specific to fetal development. So there are many, many fetal development videos to choose from, of course, that could be used for remote learning. So uh, here's a few that I found that I, I thought I would share. The first one, it's a relatively short one that uses ultrasound to showcase fetal growth by week. I think the ultrasound uh, could make it very interesting for your students. The second video um, is slightly longer, but this one, instead of using ultrasound, it uses 3D animation to show development by month with information on what is happening to the fetus during each month of development. And then the third one is an entire website featuring footage by, the, by National Geographic on the biology of prenatal development. Um, on this website, it, it has short video clips by week of, of gestation, but there are just a wealth of tools and resources here. In fact, I think on that, on that website alone, you could create an entire course or unit on pregnancy and fetal development. It's just loaded. So that's a really, really good one. Here's a classroom activity around fetal development that you could use with your students. And it's a fun way to get your students to understand fetal development, you know, size of the fetus month by month. And it's using comparable everyday objects. Um, and the approximate sizes are listed on the slide here in front of you. Uh, this hands-on every or these hands-on everyday objects will help your students understand uh, you know, true fetal development by month. So a, a lot of times when you do this, students are amazed when they see some of these objects for a comparison. And it's really awesome to think about um, a, how some of these young preemie babies who survive at six to seven months, when you can see it's only like uh, 12 inches or like the size of a loaf of bread um, and how tiny they are and, and how they can survive these days and be healthy and, and grow. So you could do this activity a few different ways. One, you could give your students the size month by month that I've shared with you here. And then you could task them with gathering nine items of similar size. They could label the object by month and then take a photo and submit it to you. Or you could actually have your suits research the size by month themselves and then do the part for finding those common objects of size to identify and compare to. But um, I think this is just a really good hands-on way to get your students to understand the amount of development that goes through each of these, these nine months. Here's an activity from our pregnancy simulator curriculum, and you can see it on the link above that you have access to that you could adapt for online learning. Uh, first, what you'd need to do is find um, the trimester characteristics list that's in that lesson and give students access to that. You could save it as a PDF and post it on an LMS system, or um, there's you could even put it into a Google Classroom under materials. Uh, students would need to print this out, and then they would cut each of the characteristics apart and make three different piles and sort it, first, second, and third trimester. Uh, they'd read through it, and they need to decide which of those trimesters it belongs in. Um, they could make a table that has columns for first, second, and third trimesters, and then put each strip into the appropriate column. And then upon completion, they could uh, maybe take a photo and turn it in. All, or alternatively, if your students don't have access to printing anything out, they could simply identify which of the trimester uh, characteristics or which characteristic falls within each trimester. They could draw a table and then, um, or you could uh, create one um, in, they could type their answers into the appropriate uh, portion of that table. You know, you could just have three columns in that blank table, and then they could submit it to you for, for grading. Um, students could research any of the, their characteristics that they're unsure of, if they didn't know which of the trimesters, and doing that would even help them to learn what happens in each trimester of development. Now, the lesson also includes the following discussion questions, which you could turn into a writing activity um, to go with this. So one of the questions in the lesson does, does one trimester have more characteristics than another? Which one? Which trimester is most important? Of course, we know all three are equally important, but major organs and systems form mostly in the first trimester. You could you have the answer key provided to you in the lesson, and um, which you can see on the screen um, above so that when uh, students turn in their, their work, you would be able to easily see if they got the trimesters identified correctly. Another activity that's a part of the lesson um, in our curriculum at the link that I shared in the screen or in the slide just previous to this focuses on healthy eating 
during pregnancy. You could share this information with your students. Um, there's a, a, some teacher notes. So I'm just gonna read through a, a brief uh, character or paragraph of what you could share with your students. Heartburn and constipation are both physical discomforts of pregnancy. Some women also have a problem with unstable blood sugar during pregnancy as well. With this in mind, to relieve problems, many doctors recommend that mothers eat frequent small meals throughout the day. This diet should include an increase in fiber, folic acid, and be high in protein, calcium, vitamin C, and iron. Beware of sugary, salty, and high processed foods as they uh, can cause problems such as swelling and diabetes. And remember, the goal is not to gain an excessive amount of weight while, pregnancy, well, while pregnant. So then using the healthy eating during pregnancy workshop or worksheet as a guide, have your students develop a daily menu using the healthy menu sheet. Now you'll need to give students access also um, to another handout in the lesson called things to avoid during pregnancy. An extension to this activity could be to assign students to do different types of diets. So you could, one could have lactose intolerant, a vegetarian, perhaps limited budget income, maybe a gluten-free. And then students could submit a brief slide presentation created, um, creating that one week menu a plan for this type of diet. So again, there's a lot of flexible ways you could use and do an activity like that. Fetal development career exploration lesson. Um, you have access to a, a free lesson at the link on the, on the screen in front of you. And students will begin this lesson by identifying substance abuse counselor skills and abilities. So this one focuses specifically on what it's like to be a substance abuse uh, counselor um, during pregnancy. So they are tasked with coming up with a job description in, in, in this project. And um, they're tasked with hiring four positions and they must research them in order to prepare, prepare job listings. So there's a whole thing that they go through uh, in, the, in the lesson. And then the lesson also ends with a brief quiz. So that's just a little bit about the free career exploration lesson. That would be a really nice extension to fetal development. Now, the next area we'd like to share resources for is for infant and toddler development. Now, the first video that I've selected here is a fairly short one. It's just seven minutes but it uses a chalkboard effect to cover the developmental milestones all the way up to four years of age. And I thought it was really uh, kind of creative and well done. The second video uh, is a longer one. It's a full on lecture, uh, hour 42 minutes, but it's just jam packed with uh, information and graphics. So something like that, you if there's sections of it that you would find uh, useful, again, it's a link that you could share with students on an LMS system, tell them to watch a certain uh, chunk of it at a time at home, but a lot of good information in that one. The third video here features uh, Dr. Lisa Schulman, who uses the videos, video clips of babies and toddlers to show the communication milestones expected in typically developing children. And again, I thought that was a fairly short, but a good one also that you might wanna consider using. One activity that you could do is use scenarios to challenge your students to walk in the shoes of an infant or toddler childcare worker. We are sharing one infant and one toddler scenario for you here today that you could use in your classrooms and try it out. Um, these scenarios just happen to be from our brand new CDA scenario kit. And our scenario kit includes a total of 78 different scenarios for infant through preschool. So you could use this to kick off a lesson or you could even use it to end a lesson. Uh, something like this could be scanned and shared online. You could uh, take the discussion questions that are at the end and you could turn it into a writing exercise. So there's a lot of different ways that you could set something like this up uh, in, your, in your online uh, teaching. So for this, uh, the focus would be a problem solving scenario um, for, uh, let's see what we've got here. Uh, you are working in a mobile infant toddler classroom with children roughly six to 14 months of age. Few of the children like to crawl or walk over by the door to sit and play. You're worried that they may be hit by the door if an adult comes in, but no matter how many times you move them away from the door, they move back in front of it. Again, that's something that's a very realistic uh, scenario that could be happening in a child care center if you're working with infants of that age. So you've got those key questions for discussion or for a written activity. And then we've also identified possible solutions. So you could uh, maybe uh, divide your students into small groups. If they're remote, maybe you put them into different rooms, depending on the, the system you've got, whether it be Zoom, Teams, or other. 
but there's a lot of different ways that something as simple as a scenario like this could uh, glean a lot of good discussion. Here's a, a similar toddler scenario. Um, this one focuses on how to how to um, create a creative creative area in your with your uh, toddlers in a in a daycare setting. So you're playing with a group of toddlers in a dramatic play area, and you know notice one by one boy is watching and not participating. So again, it's a different focus. You've got your key questions and your possible solutions. Um, you could ask students to each submit a scenario also similar to something like this, and then compile all of them, post them in a Google Classroom, and then have your whole class solve a whole bunch of scenarios. So you could come up with your own, students could help you. So there's a lot of different ways that you could create a very simple, realistic scenarios working with infant and toddlers that can really make your students think about what would they do if they were working with them in a childcare center. We have an infant and toddler lesson in our basic infant care curriculum available at the link above. And one activity is the play is learning activity. And the purpose of this activity is to help your students consider the safety and age appropriateness of various toys for each age and stage of development. So if you took this, this uh, activity and you adapted it for remote learning, you'd, you'd give your students access to the toy box cards and the toy cards that are in the lesson they would need to print them out, cut them apart, and sort them into four different uh, toy boxes, infant, toddler, older children, or not good for any age. And then you as the instructors, you do have the answer key in the curriculum as well. Um, so you could have students do the sorting activity at home and then get online to share uh, answers live if you wanted. Uh, this could be something potentially they wouldn't do for a grade maybe, but it gives them a really good hands-on activity that they could do at home. Or another way you could do it, if your students don't have the printing capabilities, uh, you could prepare uh, these, uh, print the cards out, cut them out and put them in envelopes and in some way get them to students. Um, if they're in a hybrid model, they could take that home and they could sort them at home or maybe there's a way for them to be mailed out. But uh, as we're thinking creatively and how we can reach out to our students, this is a really good sorting activity and it's a very realistic activity that helps your students uh, get into the mind if they're a parent or if they're a child care provider, uh, working with infants and toddlers, what truly are appropriate toys, what might be a choking hazard and that kind of thing. We also have a free career exploration lesson all about education and human services careers uh, working with infants on the job. And this lesson begins by identifying all the possible careers you can think of working with infants and toddlers in these two career clusters. Students would choose one career from each area, and then they, there's a, an activity here. It's a, a, a compare and contrast graphic organizer that they have to do as they research the two different careers. And it, it's an activity that could very easily be shared with your students uh, to be com completed remotely. And that's the link where you find it. Now, all of the links we're providing today, um, you will also get a handout that gives you all of the links. And also um, those of you who are participating live today will get access to the slide presentation and all the those links are also live in the slide presentation. So you don't have to be writing them all down. Our next infant uh, area is infant health and safety. So two very important skills that childcare workers need to master are infant CPR and also how to dislodge an object from a choking infant. Um, we, we have two simulators that provide, of course, hands-on practice in a safe, risk-free environment, but we, and we know that skills like this need to be learned through hands-on practice. Um, there are just a few things that you just can't do remotely to prepare your students. But one thing, one thing you can do at the link above, you have access to the curricula for both of these, these uh, simulators. And these curricula include procedures and skills checkoff sheets that you can use to help get information to your students. So you wanna use the time with your students if you have them in person at all. Um, to be able to do the, the hands-on practice. So if your students are remote, that's when you'd wanna share the procedural information on infant choking and CPR. And like I said before, at the links that you see um, on the previous slide, that's where you uh, go for the curricula, but um, 
you can find videos like the link that I have here that um, and have your students watch it that show uh, infant CPR and choking. And uh, the steps, um, the skills checkoff steps are in, in both of those curricula. And you could take those steps um, you could, from the handout. You could go to a quiz maker and you could create a quiz where students are tasked with having to put those steps in order. And I just uh, shared the quiz maker link here. That's just one free quiz maker um, online that you could use. You could take those infant CPR steps or those infant choking and obstruction steps from the lesson, um, put them in a quiz maker, mix them up, and then your students would be able to uh, have to put them back in order. Child abuse prevention, we know, is also an important safety topic in child development. And here's an example of how you could take uh, one of the lesson plans and the content that we have on uh, child abuse prevention and use it in a remote environment. And the content that I'm going to be sharing with you here is taken from our lesson that goes with our shaken baby simulator. And you have access to the entire lesson at the link that you see in the lower right hand corner of the screen. So for something like this, if you're in remote learning, uh, you could begin by sharing a video link to when babies cry. It's a short uh, 13 minute video. Uh, you can see it on at the link on the screen there. And it's really good because it, it um, not only uh, gives an animation of what's happening to the brain during a shaking, but it also has several different uh, parents that it interviews that have had their, their ch children shaken and what that's like to have to live with that the rest of their lives. And in some cases, the parents have even lost their child due to a shaking. So it's a very impactful video. Then next in the lesson, um, you do the activity, it's called what happens during a shaking and that's the simulation. So if you happen to have one of our shaking baby simulators, you could do that demo live if you're if they're watching remote from home on something like zoom, or you could prepare your own simulation recording where it shows that you're demonstrating the shaken baby yourself. But if you don't have access to that or, or don't want to do that step, there is a simulation video in YouTube at the link that I've got up there under the what happens during a shaking that actually is a, is a demo using a shaken baby simulator. So that's also a real good one for you to, to have access to. And then after you uh, do that demonstration or students have seen that, then you would give your students access to the infant facts worksheet, the SBS facts worksheet, the ideas for coping worksheet and the my plan to manage frustration. All of those uh, handouts are available in the lesson uh, for Shaken Baby that you have at the link in the lower right hand corner. And you could um, post those uh, for your students to complete remotely. So you could do almost the entire Shaken Baby simulation lesson remotely. It adapts very, very well to remote learning. We also have a career exploration lesson that is related to shaken baby. And this one is all about careers in shaken baby prevention, education, and treatment. So the lesson here begins with a KWL activity. Students identify what they already know, what they'd like to learn. And then students do a research project. And the purpose behind this activity is to give your students a closer look at careers where um, you work with uh, preventing uh, treating, diagnosing, or even, even educating about shaken baby syndrome or abusive head trauma in some capacity. And then you research one of those careers and you uh, prepare a short presentation. And if you had a group of students each doing a, a five minute presentation, they could share them with each other and they would have a lot of different uh, career exploration uh, or career exposure to a lot of different potential jobs that deal specifically with shaken baby syndrome. So we've shared a lot of ideas for teaching a variety of child development related topics online and also in a remote environment. But we would also like to share an exciting brand new uh, product that RealityWorks also has that can help you do this. And we are pleased to announce a brand new child development uh, online course that is now available. The online course has a total of 25 different lessons. You can see all of the different topics. Each of these are its own lesson in this online course. And it makes delivering all the content extremely easy for your students. So if you're looking for a very easy way to not do it yourself, um, this is a brand new course that, that can help you do it. So it includes a teacher dashboard with instructor guide and the student dashboard is where your students will click and take all of the lessons. And it's, a, again, a very easy way to do it with your students. 
So a few of the different features or things that uh, you'll experience or they'll experience. Uh, first of all, each of those lessons is self-paced learning so or self-directed. So you could tell them, uh, maybe have a create some sort of uh, uh, syllabus where you have all of the potential lessons and you tell them what order you'd like them to take them in, or you could give them uh, access to the entire course and self-directed and they could just complete them in the order that they wish. There is guidance throughout each lesson. It's broken into sections and there's a progress monitor um, on each left side of the screen. So students always know how much of the lesson they've got done, what's completed, what's left to do. Um, they get a lot of practical application also of, of skills in a wide variety of scenarios and activities. And then the instructor guide that, uh, that you would have access to um, includes implementation strategies as well. And there's hundreds of different interactive ways to engage students with that content, bringing it to life. We've got videos, we've got animations, puzzles, self checks. Um, there's things called learning objects where you might uh, uh, touch something and it reveals something else. So a lot of different ways to keep your students engaged and interested. We have exercises that are to be completed and then submitted to you for accountability and grading. There are a total of 112 exercises altogether. We also have a pre and post summative assessment so that um, if you wish to use that um, to check on the knowledge gained over the life of the course, uh, you can also do it that way. Um, to learn more about our online child development course, you can go to realityworks.com and to this link here, or just look under child development in, in family consumer science products. This can be purchased in a one or three year uh, length for individual teacher level or even school site license versions. Um, it, it's very, very easy to use. Um, you, and we even have one lesson for free that you can um, try and see how it works. So you could teach a full lesson or have access to it with your students to try it out. And again, that's available at the link that you see um, on the screen in front of you. If you go out to our website, um, it will guide you on how to sign up for that one free online lesson. And you can go ahead and have your students try it in and see what they think. So now what? We've given you a lot of different things to, to consider. Uh, what we'd recommend you do is explore some of those free assets that we shared. Maybe watch a few of those videos, choose a few of your favorite activities and just try them. If you have you know, a handful of new things that you could do to, uh, to liven up or, or just uh, do things a little differently for your child development uh, course content, that was our goal today. So now at this point, we would like to open it up for any questions you might have on any of the content that we've covered in the last half hour. And Emily, I'm going to turn it back to you because I know you've been monitoring that that chat area. Yeah, Denise, do you just want to go over one more time what everybody will be receiving after the webinar? Yes, you will be actually receiving the entire PowerPoint that I just shared with you because all those links are live in that PowerPoint. So you could uh, get access to them that way. And we also prepared a handout for you that took all of the links mentioned in the entire presentation, put it in one easy uh, document. You'll also receive that with the email um, after the webinar is done with the recording link as well. We want, we're trying to make it really easy for you to access and try out some of these things. And then we do have a quote. Uh, can you get a quote for, on a licensing fee for the student one year child development online program? Um, yes, all you need to do is reach out, reach out to us after the webinar today. Um, and let me just go to our last slide here. It has our contact. Oh, it doesn't have our contact information. It does have our website, realityworks.com. Um, but if you go out to our website, there are uh, forms where you can uh, info at, in, I'm sorry, info at realityworks.com and request that quote. We also have an 800 number that you can also find at our on our website. Just reach out to us. We'd be, we would love to do a custom quote for you for the online course. Awesome. And then are we able to put the links in our own courses? The links that I just shared for all of the, the free things, yes. Um, you can you can take any of the free the free things that I've shared today and, and use it how you wish. Perfect.
All right, I'm not seeing any other questions coming through. I'll give it a couple more minutes. All right. We really appreciate you spending the time with us today to uh, to learn about all the different things that are out there for, for child development online. Uh, there, But we're hoping that once uh, this school year ends and we go into next fall, many more of you will be teaching in person again. But like I said at the beginning, many of the ideas and, and uh, resources shared uh, today could certainly be used to, to augment your, your in-person teaching as well. Any more questions, Em? Um, just reading through them. Okay. If you think of anything after uh, we, we uh, conclude today, you know, be sure and reach out to us. Uh, you've got our, our website and there's, uh, you can call in, you can email us and, and uh, you can even do a chat on our uh, website as well. So feel free to reach out to us after the fact. Perfect. Oh, one last question, Denise. If we have a career project assignment for various careers, would students be able to get free info such as this? Um, I'm, I guess I'm not understanding the question. I'm sorry. Would students? I, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I think, I, I think um, she might mean, would they have access to this free information, the free links that you shared? Students? Yes. Um, only if students watch the archive video. Um, otherwise, uh, the, the webinar was meant for instructors. So as instructors, if you'd like to share, in, share any of the information with your students, uh, that would be up to your discretion. Perfect. And then we did have someone join on late. Um, this presentation was recorded, so you will receive a copy of it, as well as the links to the PowerPoint and the handouts that or the links that Denise has discussed. So we will, you will see those within 24 hours after this presentation. So definitely check your spam mail for that. And I think that is all of our questions for today, Denise. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate you spending the time with us. Thanks so much. Bye now.